Happy New Year and welcome to episode 59 of Pink's Picks, book recs from a sort of retired English teacher. Today's novels, Fever, 1793, Long Bright River, and As Bright as Heaven are set in Philadelphia. Two during previous pandemics that hit the city of brotherly love particularly hard, and the third, a contemporary take on the drug epidemic that seemingly disproportionately plagues this beautiful city's streets. Prior to these, my last foray into Philly fiction was almost a decade ago with Matthew Quick's quirky Silver Linings playbook featuring anti-hero Pat and his friends and family, all die-hard Eagles fans. Following my son's move there and my first visit, my interest in the United States' sixth largest city is peaked. These pieces have served to even further my curiosity. All three of these books blew me away, albeit for distinctly different reasons. I learned the most about Philadelphia in Fever, 1793, a young adult Billingsroom Mon novel, which is the first person account of four months in the life of 14-year-old Maddie Cook and the friends and family who helped her survive the yellow fever that killed nearly 5,000 people or 10% of the city's population at that time. Published in 2000, Fever has won multiple awards and understandably so. The New York Times Book Review claims that the plot rages like the epidemic itself. I am awed by both the propulsive history lesson and the stellar writing. From famous people affected by the fever to the free African society who provided tremendous aid during the outbreak, to experimental medicine, to the popularity of coffee houses, to hot air balloons, to poverty, prosperity, and politics, the Philadelphia of over 230 years ago was far more progressive than I ever could have fathomed. Anderson's deft characterization, chiaroscuro, onomatopoeia, and olfactory imagery seamlessly transport us to an earlier era, strikingly similar to our own. When I read a book, I'm always interested in its endorsements and who writes them. Two, in this case, are by previous Pink's Picks authors. Mary Beth Keene, who wrote one of my favorite books of 2021, calls this the perfect literary page turner. Dennis Lehane deems it a remarkable, profoundly moving novel about the ties that bind and the irrevocable wounds of childhood. Philadelphian Liz Moore herself claims her novel is about family and community and the role that class and place and family history play in one's fate. The title, which comes from a line of Tennyson's poem, The Lotus Eaters, has dual meanings, symbolizing both the Delaware River that borders Philadelphia and the long bright river of a heroin addict's vein. The story itself is both family drama and thriller. Protagonist Mickey is a 32-year-old veteran city cop who is ridiculed as a child by her dysfunctional family for doing well in school and loving to read. Mickey's beat is in the drug-riddled Kensington neighborhood where she chooses to stay so she can keep tabs on her addict sister, Casey. When the narrative begins, Mickey and her partner are at the scene of a presumed overdose, 
However, the ignored evidence suggests murder. As other prostitutes turn up suspiciously dead, Mickey becomes increasingly concerned about Casey, who's been missing for several months. I love the way Moore has structured this story, switching between now and then sections, slowly unraveling the family dynamic that led both siblings to the streets, albeit in opposite capacities. I love Moore's characterization of major and minor players as well as of the city itself. A key scene in River takes place of at one of Philadelphia's most recognizable landmarks, City Hall. Depicted beautifully from Swan Memorial Fountain on the cover, I love this, of my third pick for today. Published portentously in 2018, Meisner writes the story of how the so-called Spanish flu of 2018 affected one Philly family, the Brights, owners of a downtown funeral home, providing a fascinating setting and perspective. The first person narration rotates between Pauline Bright and her three daughters. My favorite is Maggie, also a reader, who is interested in the undertaking work of her father and uncle. It is through her that we learn the history of embalming. Through the mother and other daughters, we discover Philadelphia's many parks planned by William Penn, as well as the universal experiences of death, grief, and love. What struck me most are the parallel experiences between the Spanish flu pandemic and COVID-19. From her epigraph to her notes and acknowledgments, Meisner's heaven is indeed bright. I give each of these books an A. Next time I'll discuss when the apricots bloom. Until then, stay safe, be selfie, be healthy, make good choices, and by all means, do your homework. Bye-bye.